the landscape of cyber security has changed dramatically within the last few years. We have actually seen significant changes and shifts in uh, cyber security. Cyber security used to be about fame and fun for some hackers in the past. Now the motives are different. They are after our money, our uh, digital information asset. They are after our most sensitive digital assets. And uh, one of the major problems with the cyber security and, se and securing the cyberspace is the fact that there are no rules or regulations that control the cyberspace. Unlike space, land, or the sea, the cyberspace does not have any rules, unfortunately, or laws to govern the cyberspace, and that's why we see people engaging in this cyber crime activity, and uh, we see a growing number of people enjoying, uh, joining that, that those activities because there are no risks or repercussions. Uh, they don't face any consequences if they do commit cyber crime. So the biggest threat would be to our digital information assets, like I said, our personally identifiable information like our credit card numbers, social security numbers, uh, driver's license numbers, same thing with uh, business organizations, trade secrets, corporate secrets. Uh, all these types of sensitive and confidential information are at risk. Uh, part of the reason is the fact that uh, the offense or the advisories, they have all the tools and the techniques to launch attacks. As a matter of fact, with a cheap laptop and uh, a simple internet connection and uh, some open source free tools that are available online for everyone, people can become cyber criminals. And that's why we see that the cyberspace has turned out to be a very uh, hostile environment, I would say. Uh, as a matter of fact, I still remember one security expert mentioned one day in a conference, he said, if the internet was a street, I would not walk it the daytime. So you can imagine how dangerous this cyberspace has become. And this is very unfortunate and sad uh, because initially the cyberspace or the cyber system was designed as an open system or environment to support the IT inf infrastructure such as the internet, uh, the e-commerce and economic development. So cyber criminals are abusing and misusing that. This is why it's becoming dangerous and this is why it's a major threat. I think the nastiest, nastiest form of cyber crime is abuse in human trust. Cyber criminals are very creative and innovative in the way they abuse that. They abuse our trust as humans. And that's why every security expert would probably agree that humans are the weakest link. That's one of the principles of information security. So because they know that humans have this trust factor, they abuse that, and in doing that, they gain unauthorized access to our personal identities as well as corporations, uh, crown jewels, I would say. That's how uh, they gain access to that. And uh, furthermore, cyber criminals, not only do they steal our most sensitive and private information, information that we rely on heavily nowadays, but they also destroy it and they wreak havoc into our system so that to make it even worse, we cannot even recover sometimes our information. That's part of the problem. Hackers and an are anonymous most of the time. We don't know about them until we actually try to recover from the attack. With regards to their motives, this is interesting because their motives have changed over time. As I mentioned earlier, it used to be only about fame or fun or entertainment sometimes where people would steal somebody's information and just uh, make themselves famous. Nowadays, it's different. It's completely different. Uh, 
cybercrime is a multi-million dollar industry right now. Their motivations are mainly, number one motivation is financial, where they are after our money. They steal our identities and they sell our personally identifiable information for a price in the black markets or shadow markets. Motivation number two could be political. Somebody would want to harm our systems because they don't agree with us from political perspectives. Motivation number three, we could say that this is an ideology. If somebody has a different ideology than us, they could be attacking us and trying to uh, invade our privacy and steal our sensitive information. So again, number one, motivation is financial and this is one of the most uh, one, this is one of the biggest worries for us that's a great question and that's actually one of the points that I wanted to touch on because we need to be proactive we need to get ahead of the curve and be future proof and for that to happen, uh, we have built this revolutionary cybersecurity lab where we provide a fully immersive mock IT infrastructure and we enable our students to have unique access to some of the tools and technologies that are used every day by security professionals in real life in business organizations so that they can gain knowledge and first-hand experience and they are equipped with the tools and technologies necessary for them to become successful security professionals and to become proactive and help us defend and protect our systems and our infrastructure from these emerging and innovative cyber attacks. And even if they are away, they can st study online where all they have to have is a simple internet connection and a web browser and we provide them access to a virtual cloud environment where, as I mentioned earlier, they uh, have the opportunity to experience learning and to practice scenarios that are very similar to real life scenarios so that they have the benefit of entering the workforce and being ready for their future careers. This lab is equipped with the best tools and technologies that anybody can ever imagine. And this is one of the biggest advantages that they don't see any other place.